I'm continuing with my theme of where to put your pieces. And last time I looked at a game of Michael Adams where he completely outplayed his opponent. Quick recap of that game. He tempted black into advancing the pawn to g5. And after this, I think black is strategically lost because of the weakness of the f5 square, which Adams exploited brilliantly. And here I expected him to trade bishops. I would have expected him to trade bishops and play g4, but instead he played bishop c4. But this turned out very nicely indeed, because after this exchange here, Adams completely clamped black in the center and on the queen side. So black had zero counterplay because he certainly can't get in b5 or d5. And Adams exploited the weakness of the f5 square brilliantly. Um, let's just go back to this position. As I said, I was slightly um, confused as to why Adams didn't take, simply exchange bishops on d7, uh, why he dropped the bishop back to c4. But, well, this is a little postscript to that game. In 1996, Adams played a game against Doutov, and there he did something different. h3. h6 from black. Now, white would quite like to play d4 here, but there's a tactical problem because black can take on d4. And after bishop takes bishop, there's this in-between check and then you take back here and black has won a pawn. I once fell into that in the blitz game. You live and learn. Um, so Adams played a4 and now uh, protecting the bishop obviously and now white can play d4. Of course that's desirable because you know by striking in the center it's very hard for black to achieve any kingside play in that case. a6 from Doubtful, bishop c4. So here we are you can see great similarity between this game and the game in the, in the previous video. Bishop b6 blocks the bishop out and now the knight comes to e3. So this is a beautiful square for the knight. Um, this is why it went on this typical Spanish journey to e3 and not g3 because from e3 it looks at d5 obviously in this case f5 is covered so it wasn't appropriate to go to g3. Dartov exchanged I mean that's not strictly necessary but anyway we'll pass over that and Adams played pawn takes bishop so you can see that seven years previously in this game Adams had had exactly this pawn structure and realized this is actually quite favorable for white of course, this game is different because the pawn does not stand on g5, so white is unable to occupy the f5 square. So Doubtov, well, strong grandmaster, he, of course, understands the position much better. So let's see what happens. Knight f4, good square. Knight d5, so Mickey places the knight to the outpost, and that just kind of looms over the, the barricade, peers over the barricades into Black's position, a beautiful piece. Now, you know, logically one might think, surely Black should, it, should be trading this off. Well, this changes the structure. It's a kind of King's Indian now, and C4. So White will go for the break with C5 very quickly. Black, of course, could push on the King side, but well, it's pretty slow compared to white's queenside play, particularly as there's no light squared bishop here, which means that uh, white's kingside is far safer. But, you know, this is a question of judgment. You have to appreciate with white that actually black's kingside play isn't that strong in this position. Um, instead of exchanging, Dalto played the knight back to e6. Um, probably not a bad move at all. Covers c7, covers very important squares um, all over the board. a5. So there's, at the moment there's, there's no need to develop this bishop on c1. It's on a perfectly good square here and if it came to e3 it might tempt black into playing f5 because 
black may be able to gain the tempo later on with f4 and with the bishop on e3 white needs to cover the e4 square so no need to move that bishop it's on a perfectly good square but Adams does want to gain space on the queen side in case black starts to play on the king side which is what happened and that means that if black decides to close the position and go for a kingside attack then Adams will always have a pawn break to gain counterplay. Rook f7 from Daktov, good move covering here and later on might be able to shuffle to the g file. Rook a2, again no need to move that bishop, we can bring the rook into play possibly on d2, possibly on e2. Um, um, no, don't need to move the bishop. I, I think actually this is the last moment when black could conceivably play f4. And I think Daltov should have done this. Uh, I mean, this is it's a very double-edged position because black's queen, king, excuse me, black's kingside attack is relatively slow here. Um, and even if you, it gets that far, then it's not absolutely clear how much black is achieving. Um, and white has breaks on the other side of the board. Nevertheless, it's not so easy for white to break successfully. These knights are very strong. So, you know, for example, something like this. Well, let's move the queen out of the way. Queen b3, king here, bishop a3. Yeah, white may be able to break, but you know this pawn could be potentially on pre's after a trade here. Um, it's not so easy for white to break through on the queen side, and but black also has to be very careful because this could severely weaken black's king, and then it might be more attractive for white to maybe just give up a pawn to open up lines. But I think maybe that's the way black should play. In the game, black was very careful. He played the king to h7, keeping options open. But now things start to turn in white's favor. Well, first of all, black has to watch out for this break with the queen opposite. So rook d2, excellent move. And now Adams exchanges on f5. This is exactly the right moment to do so. Because after this, white has tremendous play on the king side. This completely rebounds on black in this position so you know there, there might be the chance to bring the queen out to h5 this knight is superb on d5 of course very important that this square is covered preventing black's knights from entering that beautiful square and white has this very clear hit f4 as we'll see in a moment so black played e4 And then came f4. I think that would have come anyway. And now this pawn is fixed. This one too. Um, and white has all the chances here because basically you can break open the position with g4. Let's see what happened. Because I mean, this was an absolutely beautiful game. Now, there's no need to rush this break. White just prepares everything first. Dalton exchanges off that annoying knight, but. Um, you can see that black has zero attack here, all the chances with white. And that's even a threat now to, to sack a rook. Well, you would win a queen for two rooks here because of the, the pressure here. Um, so the queen stepped to the side and now g4 is the perfect moment to strike. I mean, it's just completely undermines black's position. Uh, we can see it was excellent to put the queen on c2. The king has to step back. Now f5, really powerful play, and this bishop comes into play on this diagonal. It's on its best square on c1. So often the case in the Spanish that that bishop doesn't actually need to move. Black took, and now rook e6, great move. Obviously, if that's taken, then uh, white will win uh, material with a fork. And Adams just crashes through now. You can see, basically, Black is playing a rook down for the moment. Adams just breaks through very quickly. Okay, the, of course, 
Um, it can come into play now, but it, it, the position is lost. And yes, uh, as a first move for that bishop, that's pretty good. And queen f5. So the threat is just to take here and... Um, well, it's one one threat, or, or queen queen h5 actually, because that covers uh, the g6 pawn. Black is utterly lost, and this wins an exchange. And after this, uh, black resigned. Well, if the king, let's say, king comes here, you can just start taking pawns. Black doesn't have uh, any any decent defense here, and. Well, it's, it's, it's too much, way too much. Um, if necessary, that um, queen can just come back here. Uh, so it wasn't too early to resign for Dautov. Well, just an, another brilliant strategic performance from Adams. And once again, you can see there are very few tactics that were played in this game. Adams just positioned his pieces beautifully, and he understood when to make that pawn break, either yeah, f4 or g4. Um, well, as I said, if you want to learn something about positional chess, then it's really worth uh, looking at the games by one particular player, and I think I would highly recommend the games of Michael Adams. By the way, if you want instant notification of uh, you know when I post a new video, then do hit uh, the subscribe at the end of the video and don't forget to, to um, click on the bell symbol um, and there you have to check the box that says instant notifications and then as I said when I post a new vid you will know about it straight away. Thanks for watching!